gasoline-powered pocket heaters. Excellent, because I just want a pocket full of petrol. Technically speaking, these, well, these are a clone, I think, of a Zippo product. And it's basically, it's a catalytic converter that uses standard lighter fuel, you know, like this stuff here. Um, and it catalytically converts it to heat without a naked flame, theoretically. And I came across these while I was looking at the USB pocket warmers, the ones that use a power bank with uh, heaters on the other side, which seems like a dodgy idea. And I couldn't provide a link to the last one because uh, the listing I got it from actually got taken down. It got withdrawn. It was one of those things that uh, this listing has been removed by eBay. And, you know, if you've already paid, you'll probably still get the products. Sort of thing. And the product did come through and we took it to bits. But uh, while I was looking for other ones, I typed in pocket warmer and this came up. And I thought, well, they're not that expensive. Let's get one and take it to bits. And it's quite interesting. First of all, I'll show you, well, I'll show you what's inside it first. Let's zoom up a wee bit closer to take a look at this. The real magic is in this little thing here. There's a pad in here, which is roughly one centimetre by three centimetres, which is about, let's say, about three-eighths of an inch by about an inch, roughly, just a bit over an inch. And you can get the replacement pads online for, you can get three of them for roughly the same cost as a complete unit. And as far as I can see, it's quite hard finding information. Um, it's been elusive. I've spent a lot of time in Google, but I've never quite found the magic keywords because I think this is a platinum uh, on ceramic fiber catalytic converter, the same type as used in gas soldier arms. And unfortunately, as soon as you type in platinum catalytic converter, you instantly get all the vehicle just swamps the, the results. But the gist is that this uh, appears to be a ceramic fiber, very high temperature ceramic fiber. Uh, coated in the absolute thinnest possible quantity of platinum because it's quite an expensive material. And when you uh, heat platinum up in that sort of format, when you've got this mesh with a high surface area, which the surface area is quite important here, then gas and other things will actually get converted to heat without a naked flame. And you see that in the soldier irons, because uh, in the soldier irons, uh, you get that glow inside. Initially a flame, and then you blow it out, and then it sort of glows inside uh, to... Sh and you can see it's lit. This one had me fooled at first because this one does not glow. That's probably good because that would be quite a high temperature. Um, it's quite, you have to get the knack of these to actually operate them. The instructions are very vague, but let's uh, do this anyway. So we get this, uh, we've got a little metal retaining ring holding that uh, little pad in, and it is just a ceramic wool with that platinum coating. We've got the wick that does not touch it. There's a void between that and the uh, wick because you don't actually want them making contact. You don't want fuel to soak up because it could actually end up just burning. So this is a sort of like a, a gauze underneath and then a sort of wadding that you'd normally find, I guess, in a typical lighter. And to fill it, uh, you with the original Zippo, you got a wee fuel can. The fuel can looks quite nice. This doesn't look nice. This is very shady. It's a little uh, ta thing with a tap in the bottom that goes like that. And Basically speaking, you fill this up to the fill line with gasoline. I suppose you could use vehicle gasoline, never really tried. I've also tried pulling this out, so this may be about to leak gasoline all over my workbench. That would not really surprise my workbench too much. But anyway, I'm filling this rather dodgy little thing up with a highly combustible liquid. Oh, trying to... Oh, no, it is actually leaking. Oh, it soaks into the bench very well. That's quite useful. And then I'm going to place this in and then turn it at 90 degrees. And theoretically, at that point, it's going to drizzle very slowly. The fuel is going to soak into uh, the wick in here. I've got an urge to light this now. This is probably a bad idea with all this other gasoline round. Just why do I even think of these things? It's because I'm Big Clive and that's what we do. So this is uh, soaking in. And I have to say, my temptation would be to add more anyway. Because, you know, you can never have enough, well, until it, obviously it starts flooding out and then igniting in your pocket. So it went in quite quickly. I'll just turn this into the off position, although it doesn't seem to actually have an off position anymore. And then, rather predictably, I will squirt a bit more in because, you know, because... Eh, right, there's more. And here's the important thing. There's no liquid transfer up to this wick. My fingers are now covered in gasoline. Let's uh, just uh, make sure I've not got wet gasoline on it that's going to combust. So there's no liquid going to transfer. It's purely vapour. And here's where I think a lot of the difficulty in lighting these is, because this has to be quite warm. And the heat to actually heat the container uh, comes from the catalytic, 
catalytic converter and it's conducted down thermally by the connection of these two things. And these can be quite loose, they say. If they do get quite loose, just give them a squeeze to tighten them back in again. So that needs to be a nice tight fit. And the instructions basically say, just get a lighter and just hold it to it for about, you know, hold it to the whole surface for about five seconds or so. And I found the first few times I did that, nothing really happened. I was kind of expected to start glowing though, and it didn't happen. This uh, lighter is not very good. Let's uh, bring in my emergency backup lighter. I think, to be honest, that you'd want to actually tilt it at an angle and run it under like this and just give it plenty of heat because the heat from the lighter travelling down will then start heating the uh, gasoline and making it vape. Well, no, don't vape this. Uh, making it vaporise up to the catalytic converter. And once it starts going, you'll feel that it has a distinct effect. Suddenly you feel the whole thing starting to get warm. And at that point, once it's sort of established, you put this cover on that's designed you just basically to stop you from coming in contact with it. And then once it's uh, really going, you can slip it into this little pouch. And they say the pouch is to stop you handling it directly because it will get pretty hot. It's suddenly not feeling very hot. Uh, but once uh, it's lit, you stick it in this pouch, and I think that also limits the flow of oxygen, which is quite important because the amount of oxygen entering it will also probably vary the temperature of how much of that uh, fuel gets combusted. Is it doing anything? So this is the thing that I think, you know, initially it may be worth sticking this in your pocket to warm it up because certainly this is a cold environment. These would be used in cold environments. They're pocket warmers. They're hand warmers. So I would say it's worth getting this whole thing with the gas in it up to a modest temperature that it's actually going to start heating itself. Or you can cheat and use this little uh, blowtorch type thing. That will make the catalyst glow, but uh, having said that, it might not be the best way to do things. Is this just going to burst into flames? I'll try again. In the past, when I've tried it, once you get it going, it takes a few goes to get it going, it takes that heat to start it vaporising and then the catalytic conversion happening. Now, the catalytic conversion, I could not find much information on in that. I, as far as I can see, it may be to do with hydrogen um, molecules being stripped apart. It, it's got such a strong adsorption, like a Adsorption is where something gets absorbed into the surface and it attaches onto the hydrogen and kind of separates it. Oh, this feels like it's getting warm now. It is getting warm now, I can feel it. It seems to have reached that uh, sort of transition point. But it seems to split the hydrogen, make it more accessible to the oxygen, which then uh, sort of catacly catal cataclysmically, catalytically heats. And once it's going, you know, it lasts for a long time. It lasts for hours once it's running on that fill. And in that sense, it's quite handy that, you know, you're not dependent on charging something up or it's not using that energy from the USB one that you need for, uh, that you needed for uh, charging your phone. And uh, I've, I took this to the gym with me in the pocket. I actually wondered about leaving it in the changing room. I thought, I'm even going to set the gym on fire if this bursts into flames. But it did seem to self-regulate. Um, you'd think there'd be some sort of thermal runaway, but I guess ultimately the main limiting factor is the area of the... Uh, catalytic converter wick because that can only combine so much uh, oxygen and the uh, fuel vapour at any given time and uh, that limits how hot it can actually get because otherwise you might end up with some sort of thermal runaway and I've not managed to cause that yet basically. So um, yeah this one was a cheap clone, it came from a UK seller, uh, KG Archery, they seem to have their logo on it as well. Uh, I've also ordered one from China just to see how they compare but the only real difference seems to be the pattern on the uh, top. There's lots of different styles and patterns. I kind of like one of the Zippo ones as well. Maybe I'll get a Zippo one as well. That is heating now. That's quite nice. And it doesn't get too hot. It gets quite a nice, comfortable hand temperature. And it's quite nice to have in the pocket on a cold day. So, yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, I've never really seen one that operates with this sort of non-incandescent sort of... Uh, catalytic converter, you know, that it's not actually glowing like in soldier irons. Another application they use this technology is in the mosquito killers. They use that uh, mesh, that uh, platinum coated carbon, fi uh, carbon fibre. There is a version that does use carbon fibre, but uh, ceramic fibre. And in the case of the um, the mosquito killers, they use the they use uh, propane gas, I think it is, to is it? Yeah, I think it's propane. They use propane gas and they 
feed it, they trickle it through a little orifice valve to regulate the amount that's flowing through the catalytic converter. And then they use a glow plug into the catalytic converter and it will have a certain number of goes. It's got a solenoid valve. When you turn it on or it's got a timer that turns it on, it will have an X number of goes at trying to get that going. Once it's going, the uh, gas without a flame gets converted to heat and it gets converted, more importantly, to carbon dioxide, which is what the bugs, the mosquitoes are looking for. So then it uses that, it creates that plume with a, a chemical attractant as well uh, that gives an aroma to it. It creates that plume of worm carbon dioxide that the mos mosquitoes and midges follow back and then get sucked into a bag inside the unit. So uh, catalytic converters are quite interesting and this is quite warm. So that's quite nice. And I like the fact that, you know, you can refill it immediately. I have incidentally refilled it while it was hot by lifting the cap off and putting it out of the way and then just filling the wick and putting it back on again afterwards. But uh, So you can do that. I probably They probably don't recommend it but, uh, because of the combustibility of uh, this gasoline type liquid. But, uh, but I did it. So you can do it if you're careful. Uh, so that's quite nice. I quite like that.